From Mighty Morphin all the way to Dino Fury, we've seen the Power Rangers have some epic battles with some odd looking power ups. You know, we get the cool motorcycle, we get the cool Zord that can like, you know, become a warrior. Battleizers, team modes, the plenty, right? But there are some Power Ranger powers out there that are pretty dumb and stupid. Not to sound like a kindergartner or anything. Because for every great aspect of Power Rangers, there are like 10 stupid ideas. From clunky swords that fail to deliver, to weapons that barely make a dent in the arsenal. Today we look back on some of the forgotten relics in Power Rangers history and see what really made us scratching our head back then. And with that, maybe Zordana will learn not every power up is a game changer. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Hey what's up everybody, it's Este here and today we're taking a look at the most useless items in Power Rangers history. I gathered the top 10 of these ideas. I asked you guys on Twitter, what are some of the most useless stuff in Power Rangers? If you want to join one of these surveys, make sure to follow me, The Don Fuego. You don't want to miss out on these. So in no particular order, here we go. Coming in at number 10, Tor, the Shuttle Zord. Now I know you guys might hate me because this is nostalgic. It was in Money Morphin. We love Money Morphin. This sword was born out of a turtle, all right? And you know, that's less weird when you think of the Sentai of Origin Die Ranger. It was born out of a literal dude. Yeah, it's a dude who's a turtle sword now. It can be summoned at the ranger's need to help them out in the middle of a battle. Like if the Red Dragon Thunder Zord needs to re-energize, same with that Thunder Squad. It also has a warrior mode, which is literally just it standing up. Literally, like a turtle standing up and its fingertips, blasters, whoa. But you can't move. You're just standing up. They're, I guess they're pretty easy to dodge. At least Titanus can move while its blasters move up and down, all right? This dude just stands still. And don't let me get started on this Ultra Zord, all right? It's not even Ultra. It's just Zords sitting on each other. It's like a chair. The final attack of the Ultra Zord is literally the Red Dragon Thunder Zord just spitting its little wand thingy and just dropping on enemies like an anvil. What is this, Minecraft? My point is, Tor is just like a rock. Might as well just make him a rock star. I don't know. Let's move on, okay? Number nine, cockpit modes. Now these modes were introduced in the 2010s and were made to kind of enhance the ranger's ability when inside their zords. And the new armor would be for protection. In reality, it provides minimal advantages into the battle. We had three teams that use them: Samurai with the Mega Mode and Super Mega Mode, not that Super Mega. Dino Charge had the Dino Drive and Super Drive modes, and Ninja Steel had the Ninja Master and Ninja Super Steel modes. Now these cockpit modes will include a new mode of armor as well as a new weapon that will only be used inside the Zords, which is this is why it makes it useless in a way. Everything was exclusive to these gray walls and you wouldn't really see these modes outside of the Megazord. Except for Samurai which had its final Megazord cockpit mode, the Shogun mode come out, be kind of used in a battleizer type of way and had an epic fight at the end of Samurai. It's a shame because when you head into these super seasons, that's when the armor gets like the most cool, like the Dino Super Drive modes. Those are sick and we should have seen those outside of the suit, much better than their team mode. They just had like stuff in their arm. Like, what was that? Number 8, the Galactic Rover. Now this is Zane's high powered Dougie vehicle. It's literally like a Jeep. It was used in the desert like once-ish, near the end of Power Rangers in space. And the thing was is that this dude, the Silver Ranger, already had the Silver Cycle, which can become a Galaxy Glider. You had two great modes of transportation right there, a motorcycle and a Galactic Hoverboard. Why do you need a Dune Buggy? for when you're in the desert. That's a very specific situation to be in, by the way. This ain't Power Rangers Turbo, all right? We already moved on from all the cars, all right? I will say it did have a great scene, though. It literally ran over Dark Honda. That was bonkers, crazy. Headlights as blasters? That too. Beep, beep. And you know what? The Galactic Rover, it was also a, a toy. They made this in the show to promote the toy. They had a whole TV commercial about it. Common question of the day. Let's have some fun, use our imagination, and make our own Power Rangers weapon, all right? Put the name in the comments down below and how it'd be used. My uh, weapon would be called the Bat Blaster. It would look like a bat, all right? You can like swing it around, kind of like the Jungle Fury weapon in a way, but then you can like squeeze it, and then with like its wings, it'll shoot blasters out the wings. I don't know, 1500 likes and I'll do more videos just like this one, okay? Leave a like to lock in your answer. 
Number 7, the Thunder Slingers. Now this is one of the first ever weapons ever seen in the Power Rangers franchise all the way back in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, specifically in the episode Gun Ho. Jason and Tommy were sent by Zoran to retrieve these fire super weapons that were located somewhere in that California desert of theirs. And they were guarded by the mighty Titanus. You know, the one that's better than Tor, just saying. They were returned to the Rangers and used to defeat Super Putties. Yeah, that's it. They used these brand new blasters to defeat some putties that are a little bit stronger than usual. These weapons did have some massive potential, being different to the Blade Blaster in a way and could have been used to defeat some more powerful enemies the team had, you know, gone against. But nope, never saw them again after that. 30 seconds. They were on screen for 30 seconds. Do we know where they are now? I guess in storage somewhere in the command center. Well, that did get destroyed. So let's just say they got destroyed. Number six, Delta Runner 5. Another buggy for real? Like, are we serious? It's the Pink Ranger's Buggy Zord from Power Rangers SPD. And considering she's a little rich girl, I think it makes sense she drives a buggy. And honestly, it doesn't really have much use. It has a sign that can like direct traffic. Whoa, like a traffic light, right? Or it can make judgments, which that doesn't really make sense because if you're in the Megazord or in the Zords, I, I assume that you guys think this monster is uh, guilty, right? You wouldn't go on a Megazord for a non-guilty monster. Besides that, it just forms part of the Megazord, like the left arm, it doesn't really do much. The Zelda theorist says here, like what is this supposed to do besides judge the criminal you obviously know is guilty? Yeah, that's what I said. No weapons to protect itself, it's just a sitting duck, a police zord with no protection whatsoever. Dead ah. There's literally zords that, you know, can fly or go really fast, like what's the point of this? Sorry, pink zord. Better luck next time. Do you know what's not useless? The E Squad. <laughs> That's right, subscribe and ring the notification bell to join the E Squad today, the not useless uh, subscriber base in Power Rangers history. And hey, E Squad comment of the day, leave a funny comment down below, put the E Squad in it, and you might be in the next video. Seriously! Number 5 The Cheetah Beast Blaster and the Mega Fury Saber. Because you know what's worse than a cockpit mode? A cockpit exclusive weapon for the final attack. Yeah, that's a lot. Which is weird because, you know, if it's used for a final attack, you're not doing it with the weapon inside the Zord. The Megazord is doing it with its own weapon. Because, you know, weapons are supposed to meant to, you know, do stuff physically. If you do this, swinging around in a Zord looks like you're playing Wii Sports. That's weird. While piling his Zord, Devin can summon the Cheetah Beast Blaster to perform a finishing strike, with part of his helmet coming down on his visor, creating an alternate visor for him to use in the Zord for the attack. That's right, a visor on top of a visor. Ooh, double visor. How do you see, Devin? And on the Dino Fury side of things, we got the Mega Fury Saber, which looks like the Zord in the Mega Zord. Swords Mega Zord. So look, whenever the Sporks or whatever get ready to be defeated, Zato summons the Mega Fury Saber out of the blue energiness, and just, it's so huge. He just hits a big final strike on the monster. But like I said, the Mega Zord is the one that does the attack, and the Rangers, I guess, they're just falling by with nothing. They don't get a sword. I don't know. All that I'm saying is that imagine if, you know, Devin bought out the Cheetah Beast Blaster into the real world. Maybe he's sniping somebody with the visor or a Zato summons the Mega Fury Saber in battle. You have this huge ass sword. You're fighting Void Knight. I don't know. Could have been great. Number four, the Brachio Zord. Now this massive Zord may look pretty cool because, you know, it's huge and ginormous, but it's really underwhelming actually. It can like fire lightning bolts out of his mouth. Pretty cool. Did I mention Titanus can do this while he's moving? Its sole purpose, at the end of the day though, was to just carry the other dinosaurs into battle. Dexter here says, Tommy's Brachiosaur. It carries the other Zords, even though it was introduced after the Zords were shown to be perfectly capable of transporting themselves. That's right. The dinosaurs would literally escape from the Brachiosaur and move faster, literally run, when the Brachiosaur was and slow. The T-Rex Zord can move 10 times faster than that. And you know, the Brachiosaur doesn't, doesn't even combine with anything. All right, it's just there. It's just literally just a carrier Zord. It feels worse than Tor. Like this is Tommy Oliver's Zord. Like he had the Dragon Zord and the Tiger Zord and we're gonna give him the Brachio Zord? Okay, I get it. Number three, Fury Mode. We're going back to Power Rangers Beast Morphers for a second and taking a look at this temporary battleizer. 
Devin the Red Ranger would fall under the effects of the Fury Cell, which when held slowly turns people evil the more they use it. And so they made Devin use the Red Fury mode basically like twice in the show, between two episodes, and they never used it again. Yeah, that's right, the Red Ranger had a Battleizer who barely used it. And I get it, right? The more he used it, the more furious he became, blah, 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 this or that. But there was no way for turning the Fury Cell good. And, you know, having Devin just keep using it beyond that. Devin had these little cheetah claws he can charge up and get the slash to a monster. I thought that was pretty cool. They could have bought by the cheetah blast, blaster, whatever, and had the visor come down and it would have been sick for a battleizer. But no, uh, they replaced it with Beast X mode, which looks a lot less armored and a lot less cool. Ultimately, the Fury Cells were destroyed, and I guess so were as our chances of seeing this mode again, sadly. But hey, it's an action figure though! Number 2, the Armodrillo Puck. Let's start this off with the words of my good friend Josh Gordon here. He'd say the Armodrillo Puck. To be honest, we never saw any of the Jungle Blaster components used on their own. They were just immediately combined. Yeah, so this Puck is a weapon, part of the combination for the Wild Force Blaster which is the second combining weapon the team has. The Wild Force already had the Jungle Sword, which, you know, is pretty cool because, you know, it's different to the Blaster. You can literally slash somebody with the power of friendship, with the power of the team. But no, we had to have a Blaster in the show, which was also a toy, I think. So these weapons were specifically created for the show. It was original. But honestly, this weapon is rarely utilized. And like Josh said, when it pulls out, it pulls out. <laughs> And when it comes out, it immediately becomes part of the Wild Force Blaster. It doesn't even have its own proper appearance. Why does it exist? What is it? Is it a hockey puck? Do you hit it with something? Is it a frisbee? Do you throw it? Does it come back? Um, lots of boomerang. Frisbee's kind of different. The rest of the weapons look like they may be actually used in battle. You know, we have actual weapon looking weapons and not a circular device. Limited power, lackluster effects. This is not a weapon, buddy. This is a collectible item. And here we go with number one, the most useless item in Power Rangers history, you saw it coming, it's the Metallic Armor from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now while it may look shiny and impressive, this is actually the most mid mode in Power Rangers history. It doesn't offer really much in practicality, it kind of enhances the Rangers modes, strength, speed, but it really is like a fashion statement, really. It was used for a whole five episodes back in Mighty Morphin Season 3, and you know what? It was at the end of the season too. No one cared at that point. We were ready for Power Rangers to yo. They were initially created as a way to fight these brand new Tango Warriors, which is the same thing with the Super Putties with the Thunder Slingers, all right? Why just have the villains that like look the same? They're just a little bit stronger. So we had to get something new to beat them up and barely use it after that. They also gained like resistance to injury, some magic stuff, literally stuff that we saw with the Ninjetti power-ups earlier on in the season. Like, why? The Alien Rangers also had these powers too, so the metallic stuff really isn't that special. It's the creme de la creme de la dame. Originally, it was supposed to have the Mighty Morphin movie suits in it, but considering the disgusting state that those were in after filming, they decided, no, let's just go to Michael's and get some Crayola glitter and have a fun time. And that's what they did with the metallic armor. They must have had a great time with that. And that, my friends, is all the useless powers in Power Rangers history. Did I forget any? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Don Fuego, Monster on Instagram, not Don Fuego. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at, honestly. And of course, it is always, stay awesome, everybody.